Well, good morning, Chris. How are you doing today? Well, how are you, Debbie? Very good, very good, as we are at our together, but separate as always, it seems like. You're at your home and I'm at my home. Yeah. With a, with you a got green Alejandro pool. the pool boy in the background there. Yeah. And a green pool oh. behind me. So a little piece <laughs> in the filter broke. And that's what you got, a green pool. <laughs> So I'm so excited to have you teaching uh, uh, CMAs. It's the My Real Source way, because we don't just do the CMA icon or uh, across the top and do that Paragon CMA. We use Cloud CMA. So we use the power of the MLS to search for the properties and then bring them all over to Cloud CMA. And Chris is going to show you all the ins and outs of how to do that. And we have a very small class today, very small class. So this is nice. I recognize some of the names that are here. Some of uh, the ones that are enjoying our 90 day free trial membership, which is awesome. So you have the opportunity to ask questions of Chris or myself. And we have handouts over on the side panel on the right hand side. If your panel is closed, just tap that orange arrow open it up and go down to the handout section. There are four of those. And Chris, you wanna show our audience where they can find the rest of those handouts. Yeah, I'll do that at the end of the seminar when I'm done okay. with the webinar. Uh, you know, up there where we store everything in education, correct? Yes, indeed. Yep, I'll there show you all that at the very end. I cover a little bit of our home screen, um, you know, when, when we're on there. Excellent. You know, because there's two different education folders in there, and the the one that's just plain old education is for all of our vendored MLSs, and then the one that says MIRS education has all of the cheat sheets in there. So make sure to always go down to that one. All right. So I'm going to turn my camera off, and I'm going to leave it just to Chris to teach his class. I will be in the background for a little bit, answering any questions you might have. All right, so um, thank you, Debbie. And I'm gonna be shutting off my camera in a minute so that the only thing you'll be able to see is my um, my, my Real Source homepage because that's what we're gonna be going through. And if you have any questions, just type them in there. I try to look them over and, and answer them as I go along if I can see the screen, but Debbie's in the background to help me as well. So I'm gonna turn off just the um, video portion. So that should go away and uh, everybody should be looking right now and seeing my real source homepage. In the class, this is kind of a, a little more than an informational only class, but um, you know you can try to follow along on the steps. I go a little quick in it. But my recommendation is to, uh, Debbie downloads these and takes them all and creates a, a YouTube video from it, and I'll show you where you can access uh, the YouTube video from this class as well as any other classes that we may have taught. Um, so you can go back and watch the portions that I may have kind of skipped through a little quickly for you, or if you're new to my real source and not quite sure how Paragon works. I, just as a little side note, uh, the fact that I, I am a realtor, I've been in this industry long enough that when we had to be members of both MLSs here, and uh, I, because of certain things, had maintained my other one for a little while, including when they did the switch over, I find the tools that are available at Paragon through Paragon once you become a little more familiar with them, far better, way better than anything the other services offer. And, you know, that's that's just my opinion as a guy who's had to work in both in order to produce information. Um, I had to learn both of them. I was pretty proficient at, at both of them. But I found over time that my th this one here with Paragon offered a lot more uh, capabilities for me. Anyways, that's my little little pitch. It's unsolicited, Debbie doesn't know I was gonna say that, but I said it, she can edit it out later. Anyways, let's get to what we're here for, which is how to do CMAs. CMAs are, I, I think it's an underrated tool that um, realtors don't use today. We're all caught up in our marketing and our digital platforms and what we're saying on all our social media, which is good. That helps get you out there and gets people thinking about you and keeping you top of mind and possibly calling you for those leads. But where a CMA comes in is this demonstrates your worth as a realtor. Um, a lot of homeowners now can get the information through artificial, intel artificial intelligence and other programs that are out there that will give them the value of their home. They don't need you. They can just click on this and, and they'll get um, some sort of email that tells them how much their home is worth. Why should they call a realtor? Well, the reason why they should be talking to a realtor, and this is why I, I put a lot of effort into my CMAs to understand 
it demonstrates your ability as a realtor to understand the local market. Now, you don't necessarily have to be in that market, but by doing a, a proper CMA, you can come across and present yourself like you have knowledge of that market, which should help you set yourself apart from the other people out there that are trying to trying to get that same listing okay so that's why cmas are important and they're i think they're often overlooked and um the, the, uh, oftentimes there's not enough uh effort put into coming up with a good cma having said all that once you understand the process on how to do this you can put together a really really cool cma in in maybe an hour's time maybe an hour's time. So the question is, do you want to invest the time to put in uh, for a good CMA about an hour to win that three, four, five hundred thousand dollar listing? Or do you just want to print out a couple pieces of paper and go there and say, hey, I'm a great realtor. By the way, here, here I am. Um, I guarantee you if I, if I sit down with a real a, a competing against a realtor for a listing that just did some half-hearted CMA, versus my presentation, I'm gonna win them almost all, all, all the time. So that's what how I look at CMAs. CMAs start <clears throat> when you get that phone call from somebody and they say, hey, um, maybe you know them, maybe you don't, but we're thinking of listing our home. Um, you know, what, what, what do you think it's worth? Well, I, I set an appointment to come by their house so that I can go over with them a, a CMA. I tell them I'm gonna do a, Comparative market analysis, pull up some information. I'd like to come by and sit down with you and talk to you and go over what is there and we kind of figure it out from there. Whether they're ready to sell or not, I just want to get in there and start giving them the information that I have to let them know that I'm, I'm going to be their trusted real estate advisor for this transaction. I want to start building that relationship now, especially with somebody that may have been a referral from a past client or something like that. So the first thing I always do when I get the call is I, I go to the BSNA tax, BSA online, which is the tax service that a majority of the municipalities use in order to, to list the properties to find out what the taxes are. So by, by doing this, this is gonna tell me several pieces of information. I'll show you that when you get to BSNA. Most municipalities um, are free. Some charge a $2 fee to access the information. It's up to you if you want to pay the $2. There are other ways to find out the information without going to BSA and paying the $2 fee. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's not what this class is for. Um, I usually pay the $2 fee. I, I you know, it, For me, it's worth it to get the information from BSNA. Anyways, so we got the phone call. It came in, and the property address was uh, 4739 Lucerne. I'm um, sorry. First, in BSNA, you have to declare where you're looking for. And we're looking for Sterling Heights, City of Sterling Heights, Michigan, and Macomb. And then up here, you enter the address. You can go by name if you know it or address. You don't need drive or anything else like that, just the, just the basic address. And it comes up. Here's the property we want. And then it's going to load the information. Now, the reason I selected this property was because I got I got I get a phone call that comes in and says, "Hey, we're you know you were referred to us through through so and so. We'd like you to list our property." This is telling me this property is in a trust because it says trustee. Um, so right away, that tells me when I sit down, I'm going to ask them about this. I, first off, I want to make sure both these people are going to be present. And I want to ask them how this trust is set up and who has the power to sign on the trust. Because oftentimes, if you don't have that information and you go through and you present your CMA, and let's say they decide to list with you at that time, and you don't have the proper people there, you, you're, you're not going to have a valid listing agreement. So um, this is good. This tells me right here that uh, as far as the county is concerned, they, they show that this property is in a trust. It tells me the name of the people on the trust. It also tells me the year built and some other information here about the property. It tells you where the school district is, which is which is kind of important because if you don't know the area that well 
and you run a search and you got a couple properties that occur in different school districts, you want to select the same school district as your subject property. Just scrolling down through BSNA, if you become familiar with this document, it tells you kind of when the mortgages were all done. More general building information is in this section. BSNA also has tax information. I see that they are current on their taxes. I already looked at this. And this also gives me their summer and their winter tax. So I, you can see what is going on here. I sometimes check the building department, make sure that there are no um, outstanding permits. Sometimes it shows it, sometimes it doesn't for this for municipalities. The reason I do that is because if I do get a listing, I don't want to get hung up because somebody has a permit that wasn't closed. And it's the most important page is the property information. It gives me the owners, tells me about the property, gives me the basis from which to search, to begin my search from. I also um, save this page. I include it in my CMA so that they can understand where I'm getting this information from. It's public record data, and that's why I save it to show them where I'm getting it from, and I'm just not making up information. So I would uh, save this page as a PDF on my on my. Uh, on my screen here and then later on I'll show you how to add these pages into your CMA. So right now I have the basic information that I need in order to begin my CMA search. So we're going to go back to Paragon right here and we're going to start our basic search. It's just like anything you come up here you, we open up residential. We are going to search for sold and pending properties. Let's save that. All right, and we're gonna uh, come down here and put in the above grade square feet. Um, you can play around with this till you get enough properties. I like to, in my CMAs, include actives and pendings if I can get them, because that shows your potential client what their competition is, not just close. Close tells you what their price is gonna be or they can expect to receive for their property. The active and pendings let them know what their competition is. However, in an appraisal, and CMAs are not an appraisal, most appraisers only use closed properties. But I include actives and, and um, pendings in my CMAs. Um, I'm going to search between 1,600 square feet and 1,850 square feet. The only reason I pick those, I, I usually put in something a couple hundred square feet over and uh, under my subject property uh, and then refine my search down from that until I get in about five to eight properties that'll work. I've already done this search ahead of time in class, so I don't have to keep playing around with it. Um, we're going with three bedrooms, one bath. Three bedrooms, one bath minimum. These are my minimums. And for right now, and also structural style, I already know it's a colonial. So we're going to search for two stories right here because it's a colonial. I know in the area there are a lot of ranches. I don't want to pull in ranches if I get enough subject properties that are colonial. So we're going to save that. And then the next thing is, my last thing is I come up here to the, the map area. We're going to search by map. So we know where to be searching. And so we're just going to, you enter in the address right here. Sterling Heights. This centers the map where the property is, and I'm going to go with a three quarter mile radius. You can start out with a mile or a half mile or whatever. Again, I've already pre did this, this search this morning to come up with what I need to, so I'm going with a three quarter mile radius, 0.75, and then you just hit search, three quarter. Here's the search radius. Right there it is the radius. Oh my gosh, I have a lot of properties. And here is why. Anytime you go beyond active and you include pending or close, you have to put in the date range. It's a step a lot of people overlook because if you just do active searches, there is no date range for actives. But because I added closed and pendings, I have to select the date range. That's why we have 239 because it goes on for every property that closed, you know, that we have records of. I am going to go back six months. Normally, I start at, at six months and see if I get enough properties. If not, then that's when I start 
uh, adjusting my criteria values. I might go to 12 months and see if that brings in my, more property. I might adjust my square footage a little more to see if that brings in more, more property. May adjust my radius a little more. But right now we're just gonna put six months and we have six properties that came up. Six is my ideal target number. Let's see what they all look like. So here's the spreadsheet you get. This is a pretty good one. I have one active and two pendings in the area of my subject property and four closed. If, if I had eight, nine, or 10 properties or, or more, I would go through each one of these, especially the closed ones. I would look to see any information that may let me know what separated this property from the other ones, architectural style or something that may not be the same in the neighborhood. Mostly I try to look down at the finishes in the kitchen, if it's a granite finish or, or if it looks dated. Go down in the basements and see, see this had a finished basement right here that's all paneled in, okay? So I'm kind of seeing kind of what this pro I'm seeing what this property will look like so I can have that in the back of my mind when I when I talk to the uh potential client when I'm in there. Here's another property has a little more from the outside um different look. Doesn't have that en English Tudor kind of look I call it. Inside Inside, they, they put in the vinyl plank flooring. It looks like it was updated. So this house was uh, probably had a few more updates in it than the other home. Again, I can clearly see it's granite, different style cabinets, and not the old cabinets, probably a cherry cabinet. And I'm doing all this just so I, I have a reference point when I'm talking um, to the potential client as to what the price should be for their listing. So I go through and I do my due diligence and make sure all the properties are you know, properties that I want to include in my CMA. Maybe one has a pool in the backyard or something similar. And if it's the only property that has a pool, I would disc discount that because most neighborhoods don't have a lot of pool properties. So I don't want that price kind of throwing off my other, other properties. So I like these six, so I'm going to use all six of them. So you select them, when you select them all. It's my mouse was not working correctly. Once you have them all selected, with the, there are a couple. There are two ways to do a CMA. So you, you've done your search. You, you've you, you've located the homes that you want to use. These are the homes I want to use for my CMA. There are two ways we can do the CMA. The first way is a pretty quick way. It doesn't have a lot of um, analytics behind it, meaning that you can't show your client a whole lot. It's just basically a one sheet. I use these for for people I really know well, for my investors that want to kind of see how a property is doing. I even kind of use it for buyers who are thinking of writing a, a offer in a, in a, on a particular home. You do the same process to run a CMA on it, pull up these properties, see what everything's going for, and we show them the quick CMA. Once you have your six pro your properties selected, you come to the reports tab on the far right side, the green drop down tab, Click on that and all the way, open that up. All the way down in the menu side, you have the CMA with a drop down arrow. You open up CMA, you have three options here the quick view, the summary, and the spreadsheet. The, the quick view just takes your properties and shows them, shows them four at a time. It shows a little bit of information about them. And you know, there are two pages of it. I don't like this report. I don't use it too much. Um, the one thing I don't like about this version of the CMA, it doesn't show it back compared to the subject property. Again, this is the quick view. The other, the other option that you have is the CMA summary. This is the one I use quite a bit. The CMA summary takes your, your six properties, um, divides them into active, sold, and pending. And then it gives you information, year built acreage. You can see all my headings up here. On any time there's a more than one property in a category, it breaks it down and gives you the average minimum and maximum for each one of these. This is where you can start seeing uh, a, a little more of the comparison, what the averages would be in there. So the average um, day on market is 23. You know, the average um, so, sold price was 323,000 right here. 
the nice thing about this report that I like is you can customize these headings up here. So for instance, this is a, um, a property in, in Sterling Heights where, you know, I don't need the acreage in there. I don't need the acreage in there because they're all, you know, they're all subdivision properties. So let's, let's say I wanted to clean up my report and not have the acreage in here. You come up to where it says customize, you open it for fields, customize fields. We're in the actives and we're gonna remove the acreage. To remove something that's showing up as a heading, you just highlight that box, click on remove, it removes it, you have to save it. Unfortunately, it's a little cumbersome because you have to do each one separately, each category separately, then we come back up into customized fields. Now I come into my sold, which is under the status, sold, same thing. I come up and I take acreage, highlight acreage, and I remove it and I save it. So now if you look at my table here, I've taken acreage out. If a property was borderline to school district and you wanted to show that, same process to add something back in, come up to customize fields, and we're in the active. You can search school districts, just type in school district, start typing and you get a, a bunch to select from. We're gonna select school district. We add that. And then if uh, it appears everything you add always drops down to the bottom of your criteria. We can move it up anywhere we want. I wanna put this um, right um, after the address. We're gonna have the school district. You save. Unfortunately, you have to do it for each field so that they all have the same information in it. If it's something you want to appear in all the fields, same process. Oh, this one's already, I'm sorry, because I'm inactive, it's not letting it come up again. I have to change this to sold. There it is, school district. We click on add. And then I let, like I said, I want to move it up above the address or below the address so it's it's right, that's where it falls in on the slot. You save that, as you can see, we got address school district, address school district, and I'm gonna do same thing down here for pending, customize fields, select the status that I wanna work in, I'm working in pending, uh, quick power search over here, just start typing, um, school, school district pops up, add it to my, my table and then move it up where where you want to so you have the ability to customize it and then click on save and you can see that these are all in warren consolidated schools which is you know great for cma purposes um i did have one client who was all concerned for some reason about bedroom size he felt like they were all vastly different and i kept trying to explain to him in the older subdivision where he was looking all the bedroom sizes were the same and so what I actually did was I deleted most of this information up here because he wasn't concerned about it. And all I added was bedroom one size, bedroom two size, bedroom three size, bedroom four, bedroom three size, you know, length and width. And I put in all those columns. And when I presented it to him in this table form where he could actually look at them, even though he had the, the client view printouts that I provided him as we were showing homes, when he saw it in this form here, he realized, Yes, indeed, all the bedrooms were different, and it, it kind of stopped becoming a point of discussion when I was showing them home, so it worked really well. Again, I have some clients that are looking for property, and they want uh, you know, five to 10 acres, so then I am gonna show the acreage in there, and not so much the school district. Um, so this report is really nice. The CMA summary report, I like a lot because of its customizable features that you have that I can make these headings look however I want. Um, it always defaults back to the last uh, the last way you used it. So the next time I go to use this report, the school districts are all gonna show up. So I'll probably go in and take those out. You can, you have to customize a field. There's all kinds of information you can see it that you can add for any kind of the headings. Um, sometimes if I think uh, in, in a different market, not so much of the ones we're facing the last couple of years, I used to have under the sold, I, I used to have um, um, the concession amount when we were seeing a lot of concessions, you know, and all of a sudden you see a property that's sold and it's like, wow, that sold pretty good. And then you realize there was five, seven, $8,000 concessions built into that sold price. 
it's like, hey, wait a minute, maybe that that price isn't so such a good price. But as you can see, as I'm slowly scrolling through all the available items that you can add into your heading groups, there's a whole bunch of them that you can put in here. Uh, you can either go alphabetically and kind of kind of search if you need to, or just start typing up here. Like if I wanted to add concession, C O N, um, you could have concession amount, concession. Um, things like that you can just different you can add to your your different status again make sure you have to check your status to get it in the correct one but that's why i i really i really like the cma summary report it's a one page report or two if you have multiple properties um and and it prints it out pretty quick and it summarizes the information i also use this report if um you know kind of in the background when I'm going to talk to a client before I present a CMA, I'll use this as my talking points because the information is readily available right here for me uh, to, to look at things and understand my numbers before I sit down with that client. So I find this one to be a pretty powerful tool. It does have its uses. Again, this is a great report to use also if you have buyers that, that are unsure where they feel they should make an offer add on a property and if you want to help suggest a range for them or where they write an offer at you can send them this even though it because it, it shows actives and pendings but it also shows the solds in the neighborhood so that they kind of will feel perhaps more comfortable with the price that they're getting ready to write the offer up so that again you find this one under reports cma and it's a cma summary the cma spreadsheet um, that's just a quick spreadsheet. You can customize some of these fields up here. Um, it's basically, I, I rarely use this report um, just because personally I don't like the way it prints out, but that's available there for a quick quick uh, look at everything as well. You know, you can come in and customize these headings just like we did on the other, other reports, customize fields. Here's what's on there. Here's what's available for you to add over to these headings if you would like to. Again, you can do a single page like that, um, or you can do the, um, the summary, the CMA summary. Which I like it because it, it gives you the average, minimum, maximum, and mediums on the bottoms for each category. So play around with those after you've selected your subject properties. It starts from your, your search, and then you select the ones you want to include in your search. You sec select the properties you want to include in your search. Remember, this was our original one. And then from there, once they're selected, you, you come to the Reports tab and CMA Summary, and there's that page. That's the quick version of how to do a CMA Summary. The other version that I'm going to go into is Cloud CMA. And Cloud CMA is an amazing tool that's offered through My Real Source, um, and I just absolutely love it. This is where you start put, putting together a really nice presentation. It starts again with your basic search, your selected properties. You have two ways. Uh, you come over to where it says actions. After we have the property selected, come to actions, this thing that looks like a plug up here in your toolbar. And we're going to Cloud CMA. Select Cloud CMA. And what, what it does is it automatically pulls in all these properties into your into your cloud CMA for you to do a CMA from. And in the in you know if you've been around in previous early 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 versions of this, you actually had to enter each MLS number and get it right and not mess up anything. This pulls it over directly for you. You don't have to uh, enter them. I typically name the report the people's names. Tom. And Janet, I think was her names. I wasn't paying attention. And Janet. Whatever you put in here is what's going to show up on the report uh, cover page. Private notes in this section are any notes that you want to put on this, this CMA while you're preparing it to, to help you jog your memory later on if you want to. It doesn't appear anywhere. It only appears uh, on the screen. It doesn't show up in the report format anywhere. You start entering the subject property address. Lucerne and it should auto load. There it is, uh, Lucerne Drive in Sterling Heights, Michigan. 
and you put in three beds, one bath, square foot. Because I know the square foot, I'm going to enter it. It was 1770-1770. Again, I got that information from BSNA. If you have advanced info, you can put it in here. And the reason I put it in, I like to put it in is because Cloud CMA compares the properties you selected for your CMA against your subject property. So the more information you can have in there, the better your your comparisons are going to look on the comparison fields. So I put in a little bit of info. Right now, I'm going to show you the difference between adding a cover photo and not. Um, there's two ways to get a cover photo. You can either pull it off of uh, a BSNA, at the BSNA sheet, it had the photo up there. I just saved that to my desktop and then import it. Or if I have time and it's a nice day and it's not too far away, part of what I'm going to do is to demonstrate my ability as a as a realtor knowledgeable in the area, I may drive if I I'm not really familiar with the area, I may drive around the area and drive up and down the streets and see is, is this house the nicest house on the street, the worst home on the street, kind of what's around it. Is it not right up next to a commercial building? And while I'm there, if the front yard looks pretty good, I might snap a photo of just the front yard, uh, the front elevation of the house to load here into the CMA. And I'll show you why I like to use a photo rather than how the report generates on its own. So you, you've named the report, put in any private notes that you need to. You found the property. You've given it a little bit of information that's needed. You have your, there are two ways to do a CMA. The first way is the quick and dirty way through Cloud CMA and they pull the listings. I don't use this. Um, the reason I don't use this is because I don't want the properties that are determined just to be arbitrarily put in there, selected by a computer without a whole lot of filtering uh, based on a, you know, some sort of AI. I, again, I'm trying to show my value to the potential clients by showing them that I did my homework and I did my due diligence and understanding their property and how it relates to the market area that you that uh, I, I feel in a logarithm can't pull up. So we have our six properties here. I use the listings that are right here. You don't have to select either or. Once you import properties like this with the automatic MLS numbers in here, Cloud CMA just automatically pulls from here. So at this point, you have everything the way you like on the on the criteria page, and we hit, hit, click on either fetch the fetch listing either at the top or at the bottom, doesn't matter which one, and it takes you to the next part of the report. And again, this is just this is just pulling together the information in order to prepare the CMA report. So it shows my potential, my my subject property, and everything around it. Where, where it came from. I already did this search, so I'm comfortable with all these properties here. The subject property, you can put in a suggested list price. I don't do that uh, for myself anymore. I have my reasons why, I, uh, I just don't. Your broker may want you to do it. You may feel comfortable doing it. Um, I don't put in a list price because if they already have a list price in mind and I'm too low, when I get there, I can't back out of it. What I like to do, having done all this, is understand the market area and where I feel it should be at. Again, maybe I haven't even seen this property, so I also don't know if the fit and finish and the quality and the amenities and the upgrades, the cleanliness in the house is at the upper end of the price scale for the homes I, I looked at earlier or at the lower end of the price scale. That's why you just don't select five homes and throw them in your report without going through the photos to kind of see what you're at. So when you walk into your potential client's home, you can you can say, is it at the good, the better, or the best category, or low, medium, and high pricing for what's available in that neighborhood? I, I don't like to give them a price. I talk in price ranges. After I viewed the home and after I've talked to them and, and had a feeling or an understanding for where they're at in the market. Um, I actually lost a listing uh, a little while ago, you know, about a year and a half ago, because I did put in pricings. This is what caused me to change it. The market was going crazy. All my CMA said certain thing. They were they came right out of the gate with a price that didn't match any of the CMA criteria because I had already showed them the price. I said, well, we can list at that price. Yeah, that sounds great. 
they already had discounted me. I walked out the door. I, I called them back uh, a day or two day later to try to get some more information. To I told them I was going to revise my CMA. We should be good. They said they already listed with someone that, that came in at the higher price. Uh, lesson learned for me, and I've been doing it long enough. I should have known better. I don't set a price. I want to give them a range, and ultimately I want to get them to select the price that they feel is best for their property. Uh, let's face it, they, they've already looked at Zillow or something else that's told them what their home is worth. So they already have a, some sort of value in mind of what their home is worth before you even get there. So I, I don't I don't want to give them something that could diminish my chances of getting that listing. So that's why I don't fill in the subject property or the price. Uh, if you feel comfortable with that, by all means, you can fill it in. The next part is it takes the listings and it sorts them right now. We got the actives and the pendings um, last and they're sorted it looks like yeah low to high in each category you you have different sort options here you can change the uh, sort options by different criteria right now it's based on price if i want my actives to go first which i do all you do is highlight the bar and then move it drag it and drop it drag it and drop it so now i got actives pendings and my clothes if i wanted to change um you know, from high to low, you can do that as well. Um, come on, price. And then it changed them by different prices. Again, I want my, I want, um, I want to go actives and pendings. And there we go. We're all set up. Um, and the price would be, uh, you can move these around how you want to. But those are different sort features you have over here. This is how the properties are going to appear in the report. You can also do details and adjustments. Again, it's not a page I get into. I'm not a licensed builder. I don't know the cost of certain amenities. I don't know the difference in pricing. I don't want to get into, again, I'm not an appraisal appraiser. This is not an appraisal. And I, I let my clients, potential clients know that. So I don't start adjusting, well, this one has a finished basement because I'm going off of, of photos and not really looking at the other homes that have closed. I don't want to start saying, well, this one has a granite kitchen countertop. This one doesn't. That's a $6,000 ad. It's an $8,000 ad. I don't make any of those adjustments. Again, this is personally how I do it. I just present the information as it is. I go from high to low, and that gives me everything I kind of really need to know. I don't try to zero in everything to get them all close to, to what the what the subject property may be because I haven't really been through the subject property. I'm just showing you right now, if you wanted to make an adjustment, if you feel comfortable of doing that, um, you can do it real simple. All you do is, is, I'll go through the steps again. Let me close this one. Details and adjustments. Where this tab is, it says details and adjustments. You open that, scroll down, it says adjustment name. Let's just say finish basement. And then you put in a price, uh, $10,000. $10, you put save. It automatically, once you save it, creates another line for you to enter it on, and it adjusts your uh, price down here accordingly. If you don't like what is there, you can come back and delete it at any time. Same way. Um, if everything in the area has a finished basement and maybe this uh, a home doesn't have an unfinished basement, you can do minuses as well. We have unfinished basement, put a minus sign in front of the value that you're going to enter in there. And the adjusted price was $355. Now when we save it, oh, what did I do there? It did not go correctly. Let me try it again. And we come over here. Uh, minus ten thousand, and we save that, and see our price drop down. The total adjustments was a negative value, and we reduced the price by uh, ten thousand um, dollars. Again, I'm just showing you how to make adjustments if you feel comfortable making adjustments. I don't, I don't mess with that. So we have our properties on the second page, the subject property, and we have all the uh, six properties that we're going to compare it to. If you wanted to add a listing, you can 
at, click right here and add more listings. Just pull in the MLS number. If you wanted to take something out, just click on the green um, box right here. It'll remove it from the, the pages moving forward. So I like the way it is. At this point, I have I can either click on this custom either of the green tabs that say customize report at the top of the page or at the bottom, or right up here um, in this little bar area as well. So we're going to customize report, and this is where we're going to start building the cloud CMA. Uh, there are a lot of features you can add in your report. That you can you know that you can do a lot with this and this is where it, it truly becomes a powerful tool to use when you're going on that listing uh that that cma presentation it's these are the headings that are up here you have the theme the layout template font cover the theme you have all these colors to select from the modern colors and the classic colors the classic colors change that some of the templates a little bit whatever you you want to select it changes the coloring for all the pages. The nice thing is if you select the colors theme that you don't like and you preview your report, you come in and just change another, uh, select another theme and you don't have to redo your report. It just automatically changes what is there. Right now I'm in the modern vivid blue and gray. We'll, we'll try this, um, I don't know, find something that's a little off the wall here. What's that yellow and green one? Modern blue and green. Sure, this is not gonna look good. We're going to choose this theme. That's going to be my theme for all my reports. Uh, we got the modern blue and green. The layout. There you have photo with map, two photos, photo with max data, two, three, four column comparison. I'll go over each one of these a little bit more in detail after I run through the whole report. I don't typically use photo with map if I'm in a subdivision. Uh, in this case, I, I'm in Sterling Heights over there where you know all the homes are pulled within a three quarter mile radius. I don't need to show them where they're at individually on a map. They probably, you know, I can say like two streets over or whatever. They're gonna know where they're at. Plus there's an overall general map view that's gonna show where each property is at. So the only time I use a photo with map, if I'm, if I'm out in a more rural area and my my, you know, I've had to go, you know, a couple miles at some points to, to make our selection because there weren't enough homes immediately available. At that point, I might use a photo with map. Two photos I rarely use. And the reason I, I don't use this page is because Cloud CMA takes the photos in the order that they appear in the MLS. Well, majority of the agents, all, you know, we have the, the primary photo, which is the front view of the house followed by a second exterior shot of the home. And because we're only using two photos, all that you're gonna appear here is the primary photo and then that next shot, which is usually the exterior of the home. So you're you're showing two photos of the home that basically are the same. I don't, I don't like it. Photo with max data is usually what I go to because that shows one single photo, the exterior shot, and then all the most information that is there. I'll, for right now, just, I'll show you what two photos look like, and it's easy to change these. Um, there are covers. These are power pack covers that you can get by uh, their premium covers. You have to pay an upgrade to Cloud CMA in order to have access to all this. I've never felt the need to need, use them. I think CMA offers you a pretty good cover that doesn't require me having to pay the premium fee. So there, I don't use that. It always stays at no cover. And then the font. There are all these fonts that you can change uh, for anything that is preloaded or, or or any pre headings. You just select the font that you want to use throughout your report. I, I don't even know what I have it set on now. I'm just going to choose cabin, so you can see that. Here is everything all set up for you, and then here are the pages that are pre that that this is like the standard template that comes in there. Here's what your title page would look like. It's loading there. Comparative market analysis. Here's that funky green color scheme we picked out. Tom and T H O M. Okay, that was spelled wrong. It should be Tom and Janet. It gives you the date you run this report. My name, my my real estate company. Remember when I said that I didn't load up the cover photo? If you don't load up a cover photo of your of your subject property, this is what CMA generates. This this picture. It always comes out in this greenish brownish blob with a purple dot right in the center. 
You really can't see it. I've used that in the past. I, I really don't care for it. I'll, I'll show you how to change this later on, what happens when you add a photo. And this is why I place value in either trying to pull the photo off of BSNA or driving by and taking a photo to enter into my report. If you run this report, if, my, if I'm not actually presenting to them till Friday and I run it today, it's going to come out with July 20th, which is it shows I ran the report a couple of days earlier. So I might come out and run the cover sheet if I have time to cover page the morning of that I'm going to go present the report so that the dates all match up. So whatever I named it in the beginning is what's going to appear here. So because I spelled Tom wrong, I know it's T-O-M, I already know I have a mistake. I can come back to criteria, go to Tom, make that change, come all the way here to customize, and I go right back to there. And now when I look at the title page, should have made the change. No, it will once I get out and save it. It'll come once I publish the report and come back, it'll resave it. Here are the different pages you have. You have a cover letter, agent resume. These are all items that you can create on your own and load in. It'll automatically pull it from, from what you have. I'll show you where those default pages are in a minute. I'm just going to remove them because I don't want all these in my CMA. What is a CMA? This is a preloaded page. This is a good one. This is a good one that if you're a newer agent or even an agent that's more experienced and you want a few talking points to freshen up your, your presentation, here's where you can get some good talking points when you, when you sit down with that potential client. I always include this page. It, it briefly talks about what a CMA is. There's a couple sentences I'll point out to them as I'm going through the report with them just to let them know what a CMA is. And you also want to stress that this is not an appraisal or at least mention it to them a few times because you're not, a, unless you're a licensed appraiser, then you would be giving them an appraisal. But this is not an appraisal. This is a CMA and it's best for you to re let them know that it is an, a, not an appraisal. You have the contact me page, which if your photo's loaded up and your information, uh, I'll show you where you can edit it. That's, that's what appears on the contact me page. Map of all the listings shows up. Again, this is why I don't include the, the page with a map on it, the individual page, because they can kind of see where everything's at right now. And remember that order back, we set it in under criteria. This is the order in which the homes appear. Um, summary of comparable properties. You have all this stuff that you can go through. I'm not going to go through each and every page. I just, you know, having done this enough, I know a lot of these are, are stuff I'm going to take out and not need it. The, uh, as I don't feel they're necessary in a CMA. Um, you don't want to necessarily give a potential client an 80-page CMA. My experience is they want to get to talking about price, kind of see what the homes are, and move forward on that. However, again, being a newer agent or an experienced agent that just is looking for talking points or to freshen up your, your presentation a little bit and how you present a CMA, there's some good information in here that you can include or maybe put in a moving packet if you're one of, one of those agents that when someone's getting ready to move, you, you want to create a, a, some information for them. Here's where you can take some of these pages, you know, print them off, save them, and use them, use them on another presentation. But you can include this in your cloud CMA, a moving checklist. Again, talking points are just included. Um, showing an open house checklist tells them things that they need to do in here. Uh, go through each one of these and see when they come up what is in here. You can't edit these pages. These are prepared to you by, by Cloud CMA. Unfortunately, you can't edit them. Um, over on the left-hand side, you have all these tabs that you can op open up. Here's your introduction. You have your your all the pages that are included that you can, these are editable pages. If you want to give a cover letter, you can come in and edit that. Um, under the listing tab, here are all the pages that are available, the analyst chat. These are all different pages that you can add into your CMA if you want. Um, CMAs versus appraisals. Here's what this page reads like. I don't include this page. You can if you want to once it loads. 
Uh, it's pretty long that talks about a CMA versus an appraisal. However, I've taken some of these talking points and used them in my presentation. If you delete any of these pages, to delete a page you don't want in your CMA, on the left side where it becomes a, a red uh, circle there, you just select that and um, it'll, it'll remove that from your CMA. And I'm removing a lot of these pages just because I don't want them in my CMA. Uh, if you if you want to talk, here's a good one on commission distribution. If you're worried about that, it gives a nice little print down of, of how it all works and an explanation if you want to include that page in there. Again, I don't include a lot of this stuff in there because I try to keep my CMA to information that I want my clients to see. And I want to get to the I want to get to the meat of what I'm there for, and that is to ultimately win their listing. So I'm going to leave it right now to, to where it's at, and we're going to publish the report so you can see what your CMA would look like if you published it, and I want to show you why I get rid of some of the pages that I will moving forward. So this loads up, and once it's done published, we're going to view the, the PDF. This is what your report would look like. And it's 26 pages. That's an awful lot. Um, it didn't take, change the time and Janet it will next time. But here are all the pages in here. Um, it also includes things like listings. This is a chapter page. I don't, I don't like using these in my CMA, in my printed format, because I don't tab my pages. So to me, this becomes a wasted page. Um, but you can keep it in there if you want. I'll show you how to remove this. This is, this is, remember when I selected the one with two photos? This is why I don't like two photos. It's showing the same photo of the home, all right? So I'll show you what some of the different pages look like. And then it shows you all the, it only shows you on the next page, it shows you the next 12 photos. The problem with this is, you know, this is all the one room before they transition into the kitchen. You don't see anything else. I'll show you how you can add in the rest of the photos to the report. Um, again, this property, you're seeing the front view and then the second photo was the overhead view. Well, that's why I don't like the two photos on there. I, again, I wanted to just show you what the CMA would look like. Publish. So we're not, we're not, um, we don't like the way the CMA works. So we can either go back to CMAs. We'll just go back to CMAs. And here was my CMA that we created. And we're going to edit it. Go back in and edit it. All right. It did not, I forgot to hit update. That's why it did not take it. So we got Tom and Janet update. That'll change that. Now, remember when I said adding a cover photo? Back here under criteria, I wanted to bring in that cover photo. Now, I already saved the photo to my desktop, so um, it'll be a little quicker. I don't, I, when, I was, when I was researching this property, it's very simple to do. All you do is add cover photo, and then you go to, um, here it is right here is this photo. It has to be a JPEG form format, and you pull it in. I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to crop it. I'll leave it. Uh, maybe I'll come this side a little more. Cut some of that off of the neighbor's property. More of their property. More right here. Come up a little bit. We'll just hit crop. There you go. That's gonna. That's gonna be it. And now, if I hit update listing at this point, it will now use that photo for my cover photo as I go through. Why is Yep, we're all set there. Update listing. I just wanted to make sure my Tom took this time. All my properties are the same. We're going to come up here to customize report. Now, if we go to the title page, see the difference it looks? I like this view a lot better. That's why I try to find a report, uh, a photo to use on the cover of my report and not use the one that's generated by a cloud CMA that then like map with the purple overview. All right, so now with that, remember we had the two photos in the layout. You have photo with max data, with max data. So that will give you your, your max information on that. And what that would look like would be under the listings, the details. Here's the one property. It gives you information about the property, okay? 
right here in this side tells you how it's sold and everything else this isn't a, this is not a bad one to use photo with max data i like that and then um we're not doing adjustments we'll remove that here's the photos here's the first dozen photos like i said that'll show you the first dozen photos if you want to add the additional photos that come in you come up here under the listings chapter and it says more photos all the rest you where the plus sign is you select the plus sign it automatically adds it in there so if you open this up it'll show you all the rest of the photos for that property it might be two pages three pages or whatever you see all the rest of the photos right now i'm going to leave it on this um and then i want to go back and publish the report and, and, and again i want to show you what i typically do at, um, and why i do it but i want you to be able to see the views each one because it'll i think it makes more sense to be able to show it to you so if we publish the report as it is just right now we view it in the pdf our number of pages is going to go up considerably we've got 34 pages cover page looks a lot better name is correct uh what is the cma still in there the like, contact me page here we go we the listing tab i'll get rid of here we are with a single photo with the max data data here was the first dozen photos here's all the rest right here that's not bad but the problem i've run into where there's a lot of photos is the potential clients sit there and start looking at what the other home has, not to compare it back to theirs, but they want to see like, oh, they have this certain cooktop or they have this outdoor grill or they have this wash. They're looking at it more from, oh, I don't like the tile in the bathroom. Well, it doesn't matter because it's not your home. And so typically I don't, this, you know, here you have a finished basement and everything else and the big, oh, my basement's finished better than this. I should get more money and everything. I don't get into all that. I don't want them to start seeing what kind of light fixtures they have or that the drains are proper on the side or any of that other stuff. So what I, and I don't want to give someone a 34 page report where they spend more time looking at the amenities inside than understanding what their price should be for listing their home. So what I typically do, and I'm going to go back to, um, back to CMAs. This is the last time I'm going to jump back and forth and edit everything. Just come up here to customize. You don't have to go through each step. Um, if you click on each one of these green bars over here, it takes you to the next section to go to. I know I'm going to customize. I just come to customize and it'll go there real quickly. Here are the reports I like to use for the layout. You have two column comparison. You have two, three, and four column comparison. What two column comparison does, and I'll show you that real quickly, is under details, it compares. It compares two properties next to each other, the first two. The next page would be the other two and the other two and the other two. And you can see all the information right there. I like these pages because the information is there quickly. They kind of see the home. Now I'm not discussing so much the interiors. I'm trying to get them to agree to a price we can list the home at. That's the two column comparison. The three column comparison, if we look at that under details, it gives you three homes, it gives you a little bit more information uh, than the two column comparison and um, that's not bad to go through either the one I really like using the most is a four column comparison and four column comparison the reason I like using that if we look at that through details four column comparison gives you your subject property so we have six properties. So the first page will be these three properties with the subject property. The second page will be the subject property and the remaining property. And as you can see going across, here's all the information right here. You can see they were all built, you know, within the same time square footage. This is what I want to talk to my potential clients about. I don't want to get into the mix. Of, I've already seen what the insides are when I've done my, my homework before I go in there. So I, I can talk to them about, um, you know, wh where their home should be on a pricing standpoint without getting into lost in a discussion that can turn into, you know, 20 minute discussion over kitchen. Well, my cherry cabinets are better than their old cabinets and, you know, all that other stuff. It may or may not be, but as we all know, the buyer that's coming in that house 
You could have brand new top of the line solid cherry cabinets. And if they want white laminate cabinets, they're going to think that kitchen is God awful and say, oh, we got to redo the kitchen. So it doesn't matter what the seller thinks the home is worth. It's what the potential buyer feels the home is worth based on what other homes in the area are going for. So the one I like the most is the comparable properties, the, um, the four column comparison. That also, you'll see when we publish the report, gets rid of all these other interior photos by default. And when doing so, you get a more manageable report down to a couple of pages. Um, I'm going to move along here. Under Again, I take out the chapter headings. Don't need those. Any of the chapter. Comparable property statistics. This is a page I use. It shows kind of what they're going for. I like that page. Um, sold property analysis, I like. Here's another one that I like. Um, gives you, they're selling for 99.7% of the list price. 23 days on the market. Uh, six months ago, this number was over 100% in certain areas, and these were down to uh, single digits or, you know, in the teens. Suggested list price in Seller's Net, I don't use. There are a couple of pages I always add. The first page I always add is under analysts, it's the um, online value analysis. And the reason I add this page is for this right here. I've known. I, I, I'm pretty, I haven't gone on any potential listing appointments where they already haven't looked at Zillow. This information comes to us, uh, Cloud CMA pulls it off of Zillow, sources Zillow right here, and it shows you the homes and where they have uh, the estimates on them, what, what they sold for relative um, to what the estimate was. So this house, Actual sell price was 290. At the time it sold, it was 309. For some reason, they don't have the estimates on these homes. So what this is telling me in the neighborhood, Zillow's running a little bit high, it's running about $19,000 high. So if I'm in there talking to them and I feel the price range for their home is somewhere in a, you know, a certain area, certain price range, and then all of a sudden they're way above it, and I say, well, that's interesting. How'd you come up with that? Well, Zillow said. Well, then I can talk to them about this page about. Well, we maybe want to reconsider that because Zillow's running a little high in your area. I've also had in certain markets uh, a couple of years ago where these numbers were inverted and Zillow was running low in the area because they didn't have enough data points to support the new, new information. They were running a little behind what I felt the house was worth. Anyways, I include that this page in my report. I also, before I do a CMA, I do go to Zillow. I pull it up. I see what Zillow says their home is worth. Um, and I and I include that page in this report. I screenshot with Zillow saying this, the home is worth, and I pull it into my report. So I've talked several times about pulling other pages into my report. Uh, I just want to save this template. Um, normally. I pull in all my pages before I generate my report. It's just easier from a work standpoint. But if you want to add any additional point pages into a CMA, you come up to the right corner where your picture is. If you don't have a photo loaded, uh, it may be just your initials. Um, this is where you check your account settings to make sure everything's in there correctly that you want. But you come to custom pages. You open up custom pages and you have PDF pages you can load or custom pages yourself. One of the pages I've created is called your CMA Criteria Explained. Um, this was a Word document that I created. I always update it for whoever I'm showing the report to, uh, Tom and Jane. It's not Janet, it's Jane. Uh, I, I tell them a little bit about where I ran their homes for and what I searched for and how many came up and how many I'm using, okay? Um, the biggest thing I use this page for is right here, these notes at the bottom that says the analysis based on market activity at the uh, CMA was prepared at the time. You know, market conditions can change down the road. Don't, don't have me use a price that I gave to you four, five, six months ago. And I also include this line, again, letting them know this CMA is not an appraisal. Uh, sometimes this write-up is a little more extensive, Sometimes it's pretty quick, just like this one is, because I'm using a neighborhood where all the homes are about the same. I'm letting them know what I search for and everything else. Again, I don't discuss price in anything written. That's a verbal discussion that I have with that potential client once I'm, I'm in there, and I kind of get a feel for where they feel their property is worth. So this is a page I created. 
okay? You can either, um, the, remember when we had agent resume, client testimonial, cover letters? Here, here's all things you can come in and um, edit. These are editable forms. Or you can create your own, if you had your own um, marketing plan that you wanted to include it, you can uh, create that and just add it in here and pull it in as a, you know, as a Word document and save it under these custom pages. Those are pages that you can always edit later on. The other thing we pull in are PDFs. Here's the one for Zillow I already saved. So you can see that. They're saying it's worth 307. Uh, here, I always include the market stats. This was updated for uh, Sterling Heights. I pulled this, this I got through Paragon. Uh, if you don't know how to find market stats, there's a great class that shows you how to include this page. I just save it and upload, um, you know, pull it in as a PDF and put it in my report. But remember I told you I saved the BSNA uh, tax information at the very beginning and I include that so they know where I got the information from. I've already saved that to my desktop. I'll show you how to bring it into Cloud CMA. You just, unfortunately, you get to PDF pages. You have to scroll all the way down, click Upload PDF. I already have it saved as um, the BSNA tax info. Click Open. And that's how quickly it'll load it in here. These pages are available for a CMA. So I have everything the way I want. Um, so I'm going back up here to CMA. This is where we started. And we're going to go back to that report I've been working on. I'm going to edit it. Come back up here to customize. It should have left off where it was last time. So now I want to add this bottom tab that says custom pages, lists all the custom pages I have in here. I want to add my CMA criteria explain, my um, Z estimate, and my BSNA info. Oops, I brought in the wrong one, sorry. Uh, we'll just use this one because I already loaded it. I clicked on the wrong one off my uh, desktop, but that's okay. And the market stats um, for June of Sterling Heights. Here's the information I brought in, but I want to change the page order that they're in. So I take, uh, just highlight the bar it's on, and you drag it up. I like my... CMA criteria explained right after uh, what is a CMA. I like to put my contact page as the last page. You can put it wherever you want. Here's the tax information. Ignore the address. I pulled in the wrong sheet. I'm not going to go through the steps again, but just so you could see how you save something. Here's that Z estimate that I talked to you about. I want to put that right after the online value analysis. I'm sorry, right before. I'm going to show them that I looked at Zillow. Here's what Zillow's saying, but oh, by the way, in your area, you know, Zillow's running a little high. And the market stats for Sterling Heights, that just becomes a nice talking point for them, um, you know, so I can kind of let them know what's going on in their neighborhood when we're talking about price. So I like the way everything is right here. I'm going to save this template. Uh, sorry, I typed it wrong. The reason you want to save your templates is. If you get out and, and get back in, it'll automatically default to the to the previous one that you used, uh, to, to your default template. Anytime you publish the report, uh, it'll save that template, or save it as a template that you last used. But I always just create a name for the template um, and save it off so that if I get out and come back in, I'm always going to be, I can always open it up to that page and it doesn't go to the default template. And I got to uh, change the order of everything and delete all the pages I don't want. So we're going to publish this report. And you can see what this one looks like. And the nice thing about this report that I like, my, my personal preference, um, it talks about what is a CMA. My criteria explained is now in here. The map of the listings, summary of the comparable properties, now I have that page where I use the four column comparison. Here's your home. Here's how the homes compared against it. Here's your home. And here's how the homes compared against it. I don't want the potential seller making a value judgment that they feel their kitchen is worth more than the other person's kitchen. Their upgrades in the basement are worth more. That's not for the seller to determine. 
So I, do, I want to take that information out of their hands and just talk to them about pricing in the neighborhood, where the homes kind of came out, one had a finished basement or didn't or whatever, and we go from there. And I, I, it's easier to make that conversation with them by using the four column comparison because it compares their home back to the sub the, the their, to the other properties. Here is a comparable property statistics. Here's Zillow. I said, by the way, Zillow says your home's at 3072. Um, you know, Zillow in your area is running a little high. Uh, we have, you know, maybe it is a good number, maybe it's not. Although we have a couple that sold in the upper 300,000s, I would want to know why before I went in there and talked to them. Maybe this one had a super, super maxed down basement and everything else. And you walk in the other home and they have some carpeting in the basement and painted the walls and didn't do anything to the rafters. And they're trying to say they have a finished basement. Sold property analysis is in there. Here's the Sterling Heights market stats um, that I can talk to them about how things are trending in the area. Here's the BSNA information. Maybe I'll keep it in there. Maybe I won't. I'm going to leave it in for right now. And then, of course, the contact me page. I like this report. It's only 15 pages. Now, what I what I do with this. I also take the extra time. I try to set my appointments anytime after 10 or 11 o'clock if possible. I generate this report in the morning and I send it off. This is just a little tip. You can use it or not. I send it off to a um, any one of the office supply stores to have it printed out because I like it printed on heavier weight paper so that the color copiers come out really nice and I two side it and, and I get it spiral bound. Most office copiers that we have available in our offices, it's on the thinner paper. Once you get all that ink on there, it doesn't look it not as nice. Again, I'm going after a potential $350,000 listing. I'm going to spend the $12 extra to print out a really nice CMA for them to help set, up, set myself apart from all the other realtors that are going to walk in there that print this stuff out either at home or, or on their office computer. It'll be single page there'll be a lot of pages it just won't look as professional as mine will on the heavier weighted paper and everything else like that again that's up to you uh, to what level you want to take your um take your your cma when you're presenting it that's just a tip for something i do um most of the office supply stores there's an email where you send it to them that it takes them about an hour and a half sometimes two hours to have it printed and spiral bond I also print out a, a black and white one for myself just to make all my notes on. So that's what the final report will really look like, which is something I, you know, I like quite a bit. The other advantage that CMA has is that there are a couple things that I'm going to touch on. The first thing is you can view it live. Live is great when we were really locked down and we weren't able to get to homes um, to meet face to face. You could, we came, CMA came up with a live version. And what a live version is, is it has all these tabs here and you go through them and you send, you send it to your client, you interact with them while you're going through everything and, and, and while they're looking at it on the screen the same way. Some of these tabs you can change, some of them you can't. I, I would be familiar with live before you just go in and just say, hey, I'm gonna do a live one and kick around through it. Do something on your own home something similar send it to somebody that has access to a computer where you can walk them through it to see how it all looks but you have that ability under live um to come through and do a, 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 a cma that works out really really well for for them and it, it's a nice way of of doing it the other thing that you can do with cma if you go back to cmas where the cmas are you have these uh, three dots up here. You can also, you can copy this as a PDF link and email it to somebody if you want. You can copy the, li here's where you would copy the live link and email them the live link and then they pull it up and you work them through it. You can view it as a slideshow. A slideshow is pretty nice if you want to bring them into your office. Let's say if you have an office, big conference room or something where you have access to a larger uh, viewing screen, TV screen. Um, you can simulcast this up on the tv screen and then they you bring your clients in sit down with them and down here in the lower right is your control tab brings it up you can't change the order of the live stuff it shows you where the homes are at anywhere you see a highlighted blue um 
arrow takes you to the next next properties. The only issue I have with the live, um, if you want to see some of the um, photos of it, it's, uh, I'll go to the next one. It's hard to see. See down here, this bottom arrow where the, you have the arrow pointing down. If you click down, it'll start taking you through all the photos right here in the live version. Takes you back up. Uh, the right arrow takes you to the next property. You can go through each one of the, the pending homes, gives you the page to active homes. This is another way um, that you can bring clients in and go over a presentation with them. It's a really nice way to format it. Sorry, pre-format it with you. It helps set you apart from all the other real estate agents. Again, that was over here under the three dots under the view slideshow, or you can copy the slideshow link as well. Um, all your CMAs, once you create them, are all stored up in here. And so at any time, you can come back and open them up and look at them. So that basically is going to run through how to do your CMAs, which starts with the basic search criteria. You figure out, uh, once you get, first when you get the call, you go to the tax, you make sure you have all the relative, uh, relevant information, you create your search, you find somewhere around five properties. I like to use actives and pendings because it shows the competition if they're going to be listing, not just all closed. Um, once you have your property selected, you can either do the CMA summary or where you go through actions back. I'm in the wrong. From this screen, you go to actions and go to cloud CMA and you can begin the process to generate your cloud CMA. Um, if you ever want to access CMAs directly from your main home screen and when you're in Paragon, just come up to where it says CMA right here, cloud CMA. And again, it's going to bring up that title page for you right here. Everything is right here. That wraps up the CMA portion. I'm just going to touch on a couple other things in the few remaining minutes that we have. Um, Debbie had mentioned, uh, first off, this is our My Real Source homepage. There's a lot of really good information in here. Um, we do have a YouTube page at, right in the center, dark blue bar. If you click on YouTube, it'll bring you directly to the My Real Source YouTube page. Scroll through here. Here's all the different. Um, video links that, that Debbie has uploaded that other agents have done, other trainers have done on different subjects. You can find them all in here. Please, if you like it, subscribe. We really appreciate that. It, it, it helps us. This is a great tool. I even go back. There are some trainers that do certain topics that I need a little bit brushing up on. I'll go through and listen to the to the presentation. There's parts of it that I understand. We, we recently had a big change to Transaction Desk. You know, I, I understand transaction desk really well, but there's some parts I'm a, I'm a little, uh, I get a little shaky on. I'll go through their whole presentation and just get to those parts that I need to do kind of as a refresher for me. So there's a lot of information in here on our YouTube page. It's, it's really helpful. That's found right here under YouTube. If you want to go up here to, you under MLS documents in the upper right corner, this really small little bar right here, this is where you find our folders. There are two folders. Debbie said, as she said at the beginning, you have the education folders, which is for all the vendors in the MLS, or down here where it says MIRS education. If you click on that, open that up, search in here for whatever you want to. Uh, why is it, there? it should, uh, CMA. Cloud CMA should load. It should pull up all the things related to cloud CMAs. Um, let's see, you can go back. Here are all the handouts that have been in here. They're not they're arranged in orders that they kind of get loaded. So they're not necessarily in alphabetical unless we change that. Maybe we did. Um, and you can scroll through and find different handouts that have come out if you need a handout. Again, I've gone back and used this. There was stuff we've covered where I wanted to go through the steps a little more. It, and I didn't want to sit there and try to figure it out by myself and waste the two hours when I know there's information available that can tell me how to get to it quickly. So these are all, all the folders that you can find information on the steps. I talked earlier about market stats uh, through lead generation. 
That was that um, sheet I pulled in for Sterling Heights under market stats. Uh, you know, here's here's a way that you can get a little more quick handout on market stats on how to do some things. There is a whole lot of content in here um, that you can find under our education folders. And those are up here under MLS documents in that bar. So back at the home page, you have the YouTube membership and you have the MLS documents up here that take you to our different folders. That about wraps everything up for, for me on this. I don't see any questions that popped in. If anybody has any questions, you know, now, or if you feel free to reach out to Debbie, uh, I appreciate uh, you guys all dialing in. For you that are new to my real source, Paragon's a great tool if you take the time, just a little bit of time to learn it. And, and please, I can't stress enough the importance of putting in the time to do a CMA. One other last little uh, uh, suggestion. Whenever I go on a, a CMA presentation, I always print out a packet of my listing documents. If I'm sitting at that table and they say, you know what, Chris, we really like your presentation. We want to list with you. I want to be able to pull out the paperwork. Maybe we're not going to list it for another two weeks and go active, but if I can get a signature, that's my whole point to going there, is getting a signature for a listing agreement. So I make sure when I go, Yes, it's a little bit of wasted paper, but I'm taking at least the basic listing agreement with me and the MRS data sheet so I can take some measurements and get that thing entered right away. I may have to throw them away when I get home, but at least I'm prepared so that if they say, we want to list with you, I don't have to try to come back and lose that opportunity where maybe they're talked out of listing with me by somebody else. So those are some little tips. Again, if you have any, um, if you have any questions or anything, always check with your broker or reach out to Debbie on, on how to do something, how to load something or find some information that you need to. I appreciate you guys dialing in today. Uh, I hope things are going well for everybody that's out there. And um, thank you for your time. And with that, Debbie, do you have anything you want to add before I log out real quick? I'm good. Thank you, Chris, for another great class. All right. Check out the YouTube page. Like and subscribe. We appreciate it. Have a great day.